Hello and welcome back to ML Zoom Camp. My name is Tim Liu. I'm head of product at Bento ML. I'm going to be showing you today how to take your Bento and deploy it to AWS Lambda. So back in module seven, we learned about Bento ML and how to build your machine learning service. And this is going to be another way that you can deploy it. AWS Lambda is a serverless offering where you deploy your application and then you're only billed for when requests come in. So if you're not using it at all, Lambda won't be billing you. You're billed based off of the number of requests and the memory that you're using when the requests come in. I'm also going to be showing you a few tools, uh, giving you a kind of a quick crash course in infrastructure's code and going to have a live endpoint for you to test out by the end. So the first thing we're going to do and we talked about this pretty extensively in module seven, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build our Bento. Bento ML build. <clears throat> this is the Bento that we were looking at in module seven. It's the XG boost model, and we called our service the credit risk classifier. All right, so now that we have our Bento built, I'm going to show you a tool that we use host called Bento CTL. This is an open source project for deploying Bentos to a variety of different locations. So the way that Bento ML out of the box works is you can do a Bento ML containerize and that will create a container for you that you can deploy to lots of different services that are container based. So there are a bunch of other services, however, that where you actually need to tweak the way that the file layout is and put in certain endpoints. And these are the additional ones that we support through Bento CTL. So for example, for example, Lambda needs a couple specific HTTP endpoints and also needs to conform to certain uh, container options. So here I'm going to show you how to use Bento CTL. So first of all, <clears throat> we're going to need to make sure that we're connected to AWS on the command line. You can do AWS configure, There's a ver or you can use environmental variables. I think we showed this in module seven, how to use AWS. In my case, I'm going to use an environmental variable that's going to tell AWS on the command line which environment I'm connected to. I like to use AWS S3 LS to determine if I'm hooked up to the right account. I am. So the next thing is pip install bento ctl. So I already have it installed. Bento ctl is here, GitHub under the bento ml GitHub account. We've got a couple quick start guides here, but essentially we're gonna go into this AWS Lambda. So for each of the different places that you can deploy to, we have different operators that you can install into bento ctl. This is the Lambda deployment operator, and this kind of shows you how to use it. So first, we installed Bento CTL. Then we're going to install the AWS Lambda operator. Okay, I already have it installed. The next thing I'm going to do is initiate a Bento CTL deployment. So what I'm going to do, it's going to give me a bunch of scaffolding to deploy to Lambda. I'm going to put all of that scaffolding in a deployment directory. All right, Bento CTL in it. So first thing it's doing is asking the name. We'll say credit risk zoom camp. I'm sorry. Going to select which operator I'm going to use. US 1 1 timeout, size and memory, and use all the default options. So, what Bento ML init is doing for you, it's initializing your project with all of the variables that you are that you put in during the init command. So the first file I'm going to show you is this deployment config. And these are essentially all of the variables that you're specifying during the init command. You can go in here and change them if you want to. I'm just going to leave them as the default parameters that I set during the init. 
So one of the tools I'm going to show you is a tool called Terraform. So t what Terraform does is it allows you to specify the infrastructure that you're deploying but in these .tf files. So here you, you can see that we're going to be deploying an ECR repository. Here's the Lambda function deployment. So out of the box, this will all work pretty easily. If you ever do need to customize any of this, the scaffolding is there. It's a nice place to start, but then if you want to customize, you can get into Terraform and change up this .tf file. The .tf file is what defines how it's deployed. And then finally, we've got this Bento CTL TF vars. This is sort of a, a little bit of an internal working where we take the deployment config and translate it into a file that Terraform can understand. This says right here, make sure that you don't edit it. It's automatically generated. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install Terraform. So you can go to install Terraform. It's a HashiCorp product. And I think for Mac OS, it was pretty straightforward using brew. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is the build command. So for Lambda or for any of the other services, the first thing Bento CTL is going to do for you is build the Bento however it needs to be built in order to deploy it in the service that you're targeting. So I'm going to say what Bento that I want to build. Let's see. Credit risk classifier. Okay. Alright, and then I'm going to say dash F, use the deployment config. I make sure that Docker's on. No, oh, whoops, spelled bent to CTL wrong. Alright. And so this is going to build my Lambda image that I'm going to be pushing to AWS. So the build command, what it does automatically is it not only builds your container, it also pushes to a remote repository in ECR. It starts it up automatically when you do the build itself. So it's actually going to build the image, create the repository for you, and push the image. You can also use a dash dash dry run where it will only build the image locally so that you can test it out locally. All right, so that took a couple minutes. Depending on if you've done it before, it could be a little bit faster. The end was pushing the image itself to AWS ECR, and now we're ready to deploy the image. So the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need your Terraform state. So when you're calling Terraform commands, the first thing that you do is you call Terraform init. So the way that Terraform works is that based off of that main.tf file, it will calculate what it needs to deploy to Amazon in order to make sure to make that whole TF file exist in AWS. And anytime you make changes to that TF file, Terraform will actually go back and say, okay, what's in AWS at the moment and what changes were made and what changes do I need to make in order to make the, the file and what's in the infrastructure in AWS look the same. It's a pretty powerful way to deploy infrastructure and it's really nice for versioning. The thing that I did right here is one thing that Terraform has to do it it has to know the state of what's in that what it's done before and so it's using a local lock file to save the state of what I'm doing in the Terraform in AWS but what a better way if I was doing this in production for instance might be there's a way to s store the state in a S3 bucket, for example. That way it's not just sitting here on my laptop. And using a centralized location is a little bit better. But for demonstration purposes, I'm using a local file. All right, so now that we've got our initialized state file, 
we're going to call terraform apply so we're going to use the variable file that was auto generated for us and then we're going to use this auto approve to get around all those pesky yeses that I might have to type in one thing that I'll do real quick before I actually do apply is you can do a terraform plan and what it'll actually do oops, yeah can't use plan with this um, is it'll actually show me what it's about to do. It won't actually do it, but it'll show me what it's going to do. So it's going, it's saying, I have to add all these things. I'm not destroying anything that's good and I'm not changing anything. So this is all adding. Okay. And now what it's doing is it's talking to Amazon and it is instantiating all the things necessary to deploy that Lambda. So a few of the things, it's creating a CloudWatch log group, it's creating an IAM profile, I believe, too. Here's a policy that it's going to be attaching so that we can run the Lambda with the right resources and permissions. And here it's creating an API gateway. There's a lot of different ways to set up a Lambda. This is a pretty typical one with an API gateway in front of it. Uh, but if you're really interested, you can actually go and look in that main.tf file. It's not too complicated. And then you can go over, Terraform has really good documentation about the different ways that you could configure deploying things. All right, and now we've got our endpoint. The first time you hit the endpoint, I think it may take an extra little bit amount of time. So when you hear people talk about cold start time, that's something that people discuss when talking about serverless deployments. So usually the first time you hit the endpoint, because you're only build based off of the request, it's not going to be keeping the machines on the whole time. So the first time you hit it could, it could be a bit longer. Like you saw that was you know, maybe 10 seconds now I think when you hit it, yeah, it's not cold anymore. They've got the machines up and running. But what it does is it, after a while, if you haven't hit it, they'll take those machines back down. That way it's not costing them too much and you just get to be pay, uh, you just get to be billed based off of your requests to the service. This is nice also for auto scaling up. So if you're if you start hitting your service a lot, it'll create a lot more instances in the background and be able to serve at a pretty high scale pretty nicely. The main thing, I think the main caveat in machine learning, I would say, as far as lambdas go, is that it does not support GPUs. So this is only CPU-based um, inference. All right, so now we've got our classify endpoint up, just like we had it in module seven. And we, it is deployed in Lambda. So now the final thing to remember to do is, and it doesn't matter quite as much for Lambda because you're not actually being billed for anything if you're not hitting it. I think there is a minor charge for ECR if you go over a gigabyte. I don't think my image was over a gigabyte, but um, if it is over a gigabyte, you'll go over the free tier. But one way or another, it's probably good to kind of clean up the infrastructure that you're deploying if you're not going to be using it anymore. So I can call bento ctl destroy dash f with the deployment config yaml and it will run Terraform and it will actually take down all of those things from my AWS account. See Terraform destroying all the things that I created. And now we are back to the beginning. All right. Thank you for joining me and good luck this week.